compared to Ada Lovelace. There's one, isn't there? Um, so yes, I am Fran Scott. Hello. And I am actually not a science communicator. I am a science translator. Now, you might not know what a science translator does. Um, here's what I've been doing for the last decade. I have worked at the Science Museum, and I used to write their live stage shows and their tours throughout the museum. And I was also the scientific consultant on some of their books. I've worked in science telly, both adults and children's, both behind the scenes and in front of camera. And I've also worked at publishing houses, designing try-at-home demos. Now, I got into this because I absolutely love science. But the thing is, I would look around at my friends, and they didn't really share that love of science. And it made me think, why? Why does everyone not love science? Now, I've asked a few people, and it's mostly because science makes them feel a little bit like this. <laughs> they are petrified of it. They find science intimidating. And I thought, that's not right. What I want to do is make science for everybody, not just for those that have the confidence to not be intimidated, to not feel like a horse is about to eat their face off. Um, <laughs> I want everyone to have the confidence to do science. And so that's why I've been doing what I do. So, <laughs> what do I do? Well, with the science translation and working on these books and the television shows and the radio shows and the science museum, it's all about coming up with science demonstrations. Because if I can come up with a science demonstration that shows a scientific idea in a visual way, and sort of in a way that people go, do you know what? That looks rubbish. That, I could have made that then my job is done. So that leads me on to this table of wonders over here. Now there's one, <laughs> there's one demo that I've been trying to do for a while. It's not designed in a computer, and it might be useful in 100 years' time, but I don't think it's particularly useful now, but we'll see. Um, it involves this little beauty here. Woo! I said that when I bought it. My husband didn't say that when I took it back to our one-bedroom flat. Um, <laughs> This is a Van de Graaff generator, which is basically an electrostatic machine. Do you know what? I'm going to get rid of that horse scary picture because it's scaring me. Um, so it's an electrostatic generator, and I love these machines, mostly because it's the one thing people remember from science lessons, but also because they are just innately simple. All they involve is a, as simple as keeping hold of your phone throughout a show. Um, so basically, it's got a roller at the bottom and a roller at the top inside this dome. I won't take it off because I'm clumsy. And there's a belt in between. And when I switch it on, the belt moves between the rollers because that's how belts work. And um, what it does is it carries the charge up onto this dome and it collects onto the dome. Now, this one is made such that the top of the dome gets a positive charge. And if I hold my earthing sphere near it, that's got a negative charge. <laughs> if I plug it in first, then um, we should see some little sparks. Right? Cool? No. That is not the reason I bought my Van de Graaff. <laughs> I bought my Van de Graaff generator because I'd spent far too long on the internet and I'd seen that someone had used a Van de Graaff generator to set a Bunsen burner on fire. <laughs> I don't have a Bunsen burner, but what I do have is a mixing bowl. And um, what I'm going to do, and I do have some butane from B&Q. <laughs> so I'm just going to adjust the wires a little bit, because it's all about circuitry. What I want to happen is the spark not appear here, oh, hello, not appear here, but appear down here in the bowl. So I just need to plug this in. So this is sort of doing the work of my little earthing globe. That's now negative. This is still positive, but I need this charge to go to there somehow. Let's just move that out of the way. So I'm going to do that <laughs> with my mum's and dad's kneeling gardening things. They, their garden looks a state because they can't use them. Uh, and I'm going to use this again. But I'm going to use, this is not an earthing globe anymore. It's just a metal stick. Um, and I'm doing it this way because I want it to be pointy, because round things retain the charge, pointy things let the charge go. And that's what I want to happen here. I'm, um, just because my face is my job, I'm just going to pop my goggles on. 
And so I'm standing on there, and that means I'm not with the ground. When I hold the top of this, the positive charge will go around, will end up here, and then we should end up with a little spark between this wire and this wire to light the bowl of butane. <laughs> Let's see. Right. I do get a little bit nervous at this point. Be fine. Right. Nothing like a bit of butane fuels in the faces, though. Here we go. Okay. Go on. You know you want to work. I think my wire's a little high. Yay! <laughs> I don't know if you noticed them, but this actually got stuck on my heel as well. Very nice. Um, so... We've got that, but the thing is, this little 10-year-old kid did not set the Bunsen burner on fire with a stick. He set it on fire with his finger. <laughs> so, I thought, could I do this but just using my finger? Now, I don't want to use just my bare <coughs> finger. One, my finger's not that conductive. I'm not a very sweaty person. And two... Just because of how this works, if I put it near there and then it burns and then that's a, that's a finger gone. So what I've done is, just like protecting your sweet corn on a barbecue, I've got some tin foil. And I'm going to pop that on my finger. Now what I've done with this is I, <laughs> I call these witch's fingers. So um, around my house, everyone's like, is this rubbish? I'm like, no, 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 that's a witch's finger. Don't put that away. So this is my witch's finger. And I'm just going to pop my specs on again. So we're going to go for the same again, but from the finger. And we'll just see what happens. Here we go. Ba -ba -boom. Don't run out on me. Thank you. Right. I'll give it four attempts. I was going to give it three, but I was feeling pessimistic. Oh. No. I wasn't actually expecting that to work. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you noticed from my reaction, but the thing is, because that tends not to work, I'll be honest with you. Um, and that's because butane by itself is actually not that easy to set on fire. It has what is known as narrow explosive limits. So you know that fuel needs oxygen in order to burn. What you might not know is that there's sort of limits to the fuel and oxygen mix. So with butane, it's between 2 and 8% butane to air. And if you're outside those limits, butane won't burn. Now that becomes a problem when you want to confine it, say, in a rocket. So if I was to make a rocket that I could set on fire with my finger, <laughs> then I couldn't use butane. So, and I was looking for another fuel that had wider explosive limits. So naturally, I went towards hydrogen. Now, the only thing is, air products won't deliver to a one-bedroom flat in East London. <laughs> So I had to come up with a way to make hydrogen, because I was determined to see if I could set a, a rocket on fire with my finger. So I came up with a way to make hydrogen, which is what I've been doing for the last hour. Um, so just underneath here, I should have, yeah, I've got my little balloon of hydrogen here, highly flammable, I'll just pop that down there. And um, <laughs> these are my little rockets, which I know look a little bit pathetic, but it's, it's not the size. So, what I've done is I've decanted some hydrogen into my bottles. I've also put some pads on the end of my bottles. And you'll see why, because this is my rocket launcher, which looks suspiciously like an easel you can buy from the Works art shop. <laughs> and um, if I pop that here and just aim it up... <laughs> Like that. Now, the thing that I love about this, I just need one more wire. I need this wire here. So that goes to there, and then onto this wire here. 
Brilliant. So now what we're going to do again is, I, when I say we, I obviously mean just me, I'm going to stand on my kneeling pads, hold this, put my finger near there. Now this is one of those springy things that I don't actually know what they're used for, but I went round Wilkinson's trying to find anything that would make this work. I quite like my little get up here. So I've got this, got that, one of me the bowl. So here's the plan. <laughs> This is hydrogen. At the moment, it's got some water in it. When I pull out my cork, what will happen is air will rush in as the water comes out. That will give us a one-to-one -one hydrogen to air ratio. I will then, <laughs> slightly poop in my pants, um, put this onto my rocket launcher, but peel the tape away. And underneath the tape is a little hole. Then what I'll do is stand on here with my trusty witch's finger, and there'll be a spark from my witch's finger, and it'll <laughs> set the hydrogen air on fire and fly the rocket towards you guys. Um, now, the thing is, it is slightly unpredictable. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I would just say is if you do see the bottle coming towards your face, if you could just make sure your face moves out the way a little bit, <laughs> that would be brilliant. Um, just need to check. Do you know what, as well? I am um, going to swap my goggles for my face. <laughs> right. Because believe it or not, this is pretty dangerous. And I do get a little bit nervous just before I do it, which you can tell it's going to be fine. OK. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> right. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Just need to check that everything's ready, because otherwise that's embarrassing, isn't it? So in we go. Pop it on. Make sure the hole lines up. Witch's finger on. Don't need to make your life red. Oh, hello. OK. <laughs> Let me down. <laughs> Do you know what? I'm going to try something else because I've got my little drawer with my easel and I've got a little spare bit of pipe in here. So I'm going to pop out my pipe like that, like that. I'm going to pop it on. And then I'm going to, boop, that'll do, won't it? Right. <laughs> going to put this around my hand so it doesn't set on fire. So I've got a little piezo lighter here. And I can't believe you let me down. I'll try one more with my finger, but I'll get this going first so we know what we're looking for. Like I said, what could possibly go wrong? So that goes on there. You go in there. You go, oh, yeah, you go, oh, that's it. Beautiful. So, if in doubt, just get the lighter out. Three, two, one. <laughs> now, I've got one more. Do you want me to try it and just see? Yeah. Oh, I'm really cursing it. Um, do you know what? I tested this four times at the dismay of Next Door's cat. And um, it was really behaving before. And um, let's, just, let's just see. If not, you can give me a nice little patronising round of applause, and that'll be fun. <laughs> Do you know what? I think it's my actual... I'm just going to check see if I'm getting a spark, because I don't think I'm getting a spark. No, I am. You're just being a word that I can't say when there's 16 year olds in here, aren't you? <laughs> um, so, bum, 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 bum. Let's try again. Come on, if you work, Bottle, then it'll look like it's all meant to be, won't it? There we go. Give it a bit of a wave, get some nice oxygen in there. On you go. Where's my hole? Where's my hole? Witch's finger. Let's try that one. Let's just see. So 
so hopefully not looking like a fool in three, two, one. <laughs> Saving your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Brad Scott! <laughs>